is um you know it, it's is dying is dying old ways of living the old ways of doing things it's not it's not going to last for too much long i'm saying this to y'all specifically because it's important that those that understand that are aligned and what's going on around here that y'all paying attention because without us making a change right now and and shifting our consciousness our kids are they're, they're gonna fall victim to this system too and the system i'm talking about is it's a myriad of objective topics that we follow since we were kids which is sex love relationships religion culture class finance entertainment media you know social platforms at this point please do not fall victim to these things that are being manipulated and controlled this is saying Jalen Brown and the NBA Players Association are standing by Kyrie Irving. It's about time, isn't it? But I gotta give a quick shout out to Jalen Brown. These two were previously teammates for the Boston Celtics, may I add. But that's not what's important. What's important is that teammates stick with each other. They have each other's back. So I gotta give kudos to Jalen Brown for standing up for his teammate. Now, the Players Association are appealing Irving's suspension and the terms of reinstatement by the Brooklyn Nets which are ridiculous. And in my opinion, I don't think they believe that Kyrie Irving is an unfit member to represent the Brooklyn Nets. So here's the article over here, Kyrie Irving suspension. Jalen Brown says NBA PA has issues with requirements for Nets guards reinstatement. Boston forward Jalen Brown was vice president of the National Basketball Players Association. Interestingly enough, Kyrie Irving used to be the vice president of the Players Association. I don't believe Kyrie Irving is anti-Semitic. This is what's important in this statement. Listen to the press conference. There was an interesting distinction between what somebody says verbally and what somebody posts as a link on a platform with no description behind it. Again, you can listen to the press conference to receive the context and the description to what Kyrie Irving means. This year is a requirement for reinstatement that the Brooklyn Nets require. Apologize and condemn the film he promoted, make a 500,000 donation to anti-hate causes, complete sensitivity training, complete anti-Semitism training, meet with the Anti-Defamation League and Jewish leaders, meet with team owner Joe Tsai to demonstrate an understanding of the situation. What did Kyrie Irving really do? Man? Like you wondered that what he do he did and what he's receiving are not the same. So this year is awfully excessive. Goes on to say, with no specific guideline in place on a situation like this, Irving has received an arbitrary and excessive punishment. Going back to this, what are they basing this off of? The terms of his return, they seem like a lot. And a lot of the players expressed discomfort with the terms, Brown said. He made a mistake. He posted something. There was no distinction. Maybe we can move forward. But the terms in which he has to fulfill to return, I think not just speaking for me, speaking as a vice president, from a lot of our players, we didn't agree with the terms that was required for him to come back. And we're waiting for this Tuesday meeting to happen to see what comes out of it. But we'll go from there. That's all I'll say. That's all you need to say, Jalen. They don't need to cancel you too, or should I say, try to silence you as well. But I'll come back with this Tuesday meeting that happened. And also shout out to all the players and Jalen Brown for igniting this. So let's break this down. Where did this label come from? Why do people start calling him Kyrie Irving and anti semit Oh, I know why. You keep repeating it. The media, everyone, you keep repeating it. Now people will start believing it. Repeat a lie long enough, it becomes true. So keep calling Kyrie Irving anti semit keep calling Kyrie Irving anti it eventually becomes true. So that's where the label comes from. Because it's funny because the NBA never suspended him. If it was really bad, if Adam Silver, the commissioner, believed that Kyrie Irving committed an infraction, why not suspend him? Because there's clearly nothing there. It's based on this notion that he's an anti-Semit that is fabricated. It has no real basis. And Kyrie Irving met with Adam Silver, I believe yesterday, 
discussing this and it was said that they had a cordial discussion they had an understanding and it was productive it's funny because Charles Barkley was saying oh hey Adam Silver you should suspend him why would you let Kyrie Irving it's important to know that Adam Silver is Jewish take your money and insult your religion what none of that took place again that was the outcry from the public now the suspension didn't come from the NBA but it came from the Brooklyn Nets now why would the Brooklyn Nets suspend Kyrie Irving and not the NBA but I'll tell you why the Brooklyn Nets and Kyrie Irving always had a tumultuous relationship dating Me back the Brooklyn Nets hired head coach Steve Nash and Kyrie Irving proceeded by saying we don't need a coach when Kyrie Irving took a leave of absence in the middle of the season and then when Kyrie Irving wouldn't take the COVID jab but we don't really talk about that we always seem to leave that one out but the Brooklyn Nets wanted a reason to almost part ways with Kyrie Irving so listen what happens so they take this public out this public outcry with the name anti-semit being thrown away and now this gives them the right to suspend them all right now they suspend them for about five games but now we won't stop at there now we add these terms that he has to follow before he can be reinstated now they put these outlandish statements especially that last one going to Joe's side and showing what he understands what so the point of this is that they gave this statement knowing that Kyrie Irving might not fulfill them thus giving them a right to release them so now you see why the Brooklyn Nets suspended Kyrie Irving but not the NBA that's why the NBA Players Association Jalen Brown they came in and say hold up the things that you guys have in those terms whoa they're completely out of whack nothing in our collective bargaining agreement says that or states how we should deal with something so unprecedented or how to deal with something like that right and then now we see that sports pundit and different guys now are jumping in after the players association gave their statement you hear Stephen A. Smith oh yeah he was doing baby and carrying all but now oh actually that's a bit too excessive but again only after the players association jumped in so it's just interesting to see that as you start putting these puzzles together you start seeing the full picture and everything starts making a lot more sense but wait I do have an issue with the idea of Kyrie posting the documentary let me explain why in the second press conference Kyrie Irving is telling the reporter where were you when I was young trying to figure out my way around the world and he goes on to elaborate and I got that he's talking about his identity as a black man when we look at history we always seeing slavery it's always negativity it's never uplifting and that made sense on why he gravitated with the notion of the black Hebrew Israelites being the chosen one into the kingdom of God but I challenge Kyrie Irving why not look at history a little bit different instead of looking at our ancestors as slaves looking at them as people as faith who overcame hardship who had their Bibles although they couldn't really read it or understand it when I look at it from that standpoint that's the same fear that God drew over your own saga and also and also I look into my Bible Matthew 18 the disciples are asking Jesus who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and then Jesus proceeds to pulls in a, a kid a child and tells them I'm paraphrasing unless you change and become like a child you will never enter the kingdom of heaven he goes on to elaborate whoever humbles himself will be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven I'll just leave it at that with that said I feel like we don't give him enough credit for his growth as a man we already know he can dance with the rock that's no news but when you look at his journey from Cleveland to Boston to now Brooklyn I'm seeing a change although yes he had made a lot of mistakes he's not a perfect human being but one thing I give these pundits credit is that I've always said his heart is in the right place and now I'm seeing it more than ever you see the way he conducts himself in interviews you see the way that he speaks you see the decision that he's now making I'm really seeing the growth talking about that before he was afraid to express himself uh, authentically but now you're seeing that he's a lot more polished he's educated I'm not afraid of these mics these cameras I used to be looking everyone in the eye and telling them the truth and I'm proud of who I am any the label that you put on me I'm able to dismiss because I study I know the Oxford dictionary you look it up right Just one of the biggest mistakes I had in being a kid was not knowing European or Western language until I started looking it up and understanding the definitions and why they say 
If you want to trick a black person, put it in a book. I was wondering my whole life why they said that. Now I'm 30 years old and I know reading is a superpower because it helps me understand where I'm going and where I come from. Like a tree with roots. And one thing that they can't take away from him is his integrity, his character. He's truly a beacon of light. He's willing to shed light on things that they rather it stay dark. Is it by choice? Are they trying to keep some benefit that comes by remaining in the dark? I don't know, but I hope you enjoy this video.